Hey, it's good to see everyone again. So this is gonna be our budget constraint part two video, and I will try to keep this one under five minutes. And we're gonna go over the feasible set, uh, and more specifically, the graphical representation of the feasible set, which we briefly touched upon in the first video. Okay, so the basic idea of the graphical representation of a feasible set is to use a two-dimensional Cartesian plane to represent the set of all points that are affordable given a set of prices and given a particular budget. So uh, just by convention, the first good is listed on the horizontal axis and the second good is listed on the vertical axis. So if you have $100, uh, then if we spent all of our money on good X, given a price of X of 10, right here, then we could at most spend, we could at most purchase 10 units of good X. So that tells us that, that tells us that the horizontal intercept must be 10. And if we were to spend all of our money on good Y, given the price of good Y equal to $20, then 100 divided by 20 equal to five. So that tells us that the vertical intercept must be equal to 5. Thus, the feasible set is the triangle bounded on the bottom by the horizontal axis, bounded on the side by the uh, vertical axis, and bounded in between them by the line in between the two, by the line in between the two uh, axes. So everything within this triangle is part of the feasible set. Everything on the line, everything on the line is affordable. Affordable. And everything within the triangle is affordable. So for example, point A is affordable. Point B is affordable. Point C is unaffordable. It's not part of the feasible set. It's not feasibly, it's not feasible to achieve that point. Okay, so to continue, let's do a few examples. Sorry, so let's start by drawing a Cartesian plane with X on the horizontal and Y, good Y, units of good Y on the vertical. So we, when you have a budget of 100 and the price of X is equal to 10, you could at most buy, purchase 10 units of good X if we were to spend all of our money good x and purchase zero units of y, which is the definition of the uh, horizontal intercept. And if we were to buy zero units of good x and, per and spend all of our money on good y, then we could at most afford five units of good y. And then that gives us the basic outline of the feasible set. So it's a triangle. So point A uh, is one consumption bundle. And as we mentioned earlier, consumption bundles are ordered pairs. The first unit corresponds to the x, and the second, uh, and the second part of the ordered pair corresponds to the y. So, so point A, uh, the consumption bundle of ten and zero, would be ex exactly on the affordable set. It would be on the uh, intercept, and it's affordable because we know it costs a hundred dollars. Because ten units of good x at a price of ten dollars cost a hundred dollars. Therefore, it's affordable. Uh, that's what we call that point A. Point B, where we're going to spend all of our money on good Y, would be the opposite. Would be the opposite intercept. Point B. And we know it's affordable because if we spend, if we buy five units of good Y at twenty dollars a piece, you're spending a hundred dollars. Uh, so what about point C? Well, point C, we're going to spend, we're going to purchase four units of good X and three units of good Y, and how much does that cost? Well, if we do four units of good X at $10 a piece, plus three units of good Y at $20 a piece, we know that's gonna cost $100. So it's gonna be exactly on the line. It's at the limit of what's affordable. So that's point C. So it is part of our feasible set, because it's affordable. What about point D? 
At point D, let's see, that was point C. So at point D, if we spend, if we buy two units of good X, well, that's going to cost us twenty dollars, two times ten. And if we buy two units of good Y, that's going to cost us forty dollars. So twenty plus forty is equal to sixty. So we're only spending sixty dollars of our budget. So we're going to be here at point two two. So it's an interior point. Yes, it's affordable, it's feasible, uh, but we're not using all of our bud all of our budget. Therefore, we're not on the line. And point E is a little bit different. At point E, we're going to purchase four units of good X, which is going to cost us forty dollars, and four units of good Y, which is going to cost us eighty dollars, which brings us to a total cost of one hundred twenty which is going to be approximately, so here at 4, going up from 4, and going up from 4 over here, that puts point D at approximately right there. So that is not affordable. It's not part of the feasible set. It lies outside of the feasible set. Therefore, it is an unfeasible or unaffordable point. Okay, to finish off this video, let's add an economic interpretation on top of the math. The graph is the math. The graph is a mathematical tool, but what we care about is economics. So first, let's review the concept of a slope. So here, uh, the slope of the feasible set, the slope of the budget constraint, which is what constrains the feasible set, is going to be equal to the rise of the run. So slope, slope is equal to the rise over the run of the line. So let's say, just for example's sake, that the movement, when you move from point A to point B, Y goes down by approximately Z units. And then when we move to, from point A to point B, just to make this argument really simple and clean, let's say that we are increasing X by one unit. So in this, in this example, that means that the slope well, the line is going to be equal to z, which is the rise, negative z, because you're going down z units to go from point A to point B, and you're going over one unit. So the slope is equal to negative z. That is the, that is the slope of this budget constraint, just because that's how I drew it. Uh, but that doesn't tell us very much about economics. What it does tell us is we can now think about the concept of opportunity cost. So opportunity cost, a concept which I'm sure you learned about in your principles of microeconomics or macroeconomics class. Opportunity cost is defined as what you must give up in order to gain something else, which it might be monetary or might not be monetary. So in this case, in order to gain one more unit of good X, what did you have to give up? in order to gain one more unit of good X? Well, in order to move from point A to point B, which is just gaining one more unit of good X, what did you have to give up? Well, you had, you had to give up Z units. You had to give up Z units of good Y in order to gain one more unit of X, which in this case means that the opportunity cost is equal to Z which is equal to the absolute value of the slope. Uh, so that is the economic interpretation of, of the graph. Opportunity cost is equal, the opportunity cost of good X in terms of good Y is equal to the absolute value of the slope of the budget constraint. And as one last thing, it's worth mentioning that you can think of the opportunity cost as simply equal to the slope and ignore the absolute value sign. And just keep in mind that the slope is going to be negative for any budget constraint. And that just changes the interpretation a little bit. As, uh, as z, you're giving up negative z, you're losing negative z in order to gain one more unit of good x. It really just depends on if you want to think of the opportunity cost as a positive number or as a negative number. But it doesn't make any difference as long as you keep it straight in your mind.